And with that, we'll turn things over to Chicago Fire President and General Manager Nelson Rodriguez for an opening statement. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you all for attending today. Thanks for joining via the conference call or for watching online. You know, I'd like to just begin today, if I could, with a few short notes. First, I want to congratulate the teams that made the playoffs, uh, made the best team win. I also want to take a moment to uh, salute the inductees to the National Soccer Hall of Fame, uh, including MLS Commissioner Don Garber, the New England Revolution head coach Brad Friedel. There's also two legendary women's national team players, Cindy Parlow Cohn and Tiffany Milbrett, uh, former U.S. Soccer President Dr. Bob Contagulia, and I also want to recognize that uh, J.P. Della Camera was honored with the prestigious Colin Jose Media Award. I'd also be remiss if I didn't uh, recognize and thank the Hunt family for recreating the National Soccer Hall of Fame as part of their stadium in Frisco. It's a magnificent experience. Uh, I recommend that any fan traveling go, go see the Hall of Fame and that experience. Um, Clark and Dan Hunt are following in the steps of their legendary father, the late, great Mr. Lamar Hunt, and also recognition to their mom, Norma, for their continued support of the sport and this endeavor. And lastly, before getting started, I, I want to recognize the three guys who have uh, recently retired, Alan Gordon, Brandon Vincent, and Christian Dean, who announced his retirement a little bit earlier today. Um, three outstanding men, all of whom gave a lot to the club uh, in different ways. You know, I have uh, four children, two of which are boys, and if they could have careers as good and behave as well as those three, I'd, I'd say I've been a pretty good dad. So thanks for allowing me those opening remarks. You know, throughout this week, I met with fans, the team, and club staff, and my message to them is the same as I'll share today. We entered this MLS season uh, with a chance to consolidate the good results that we achieved in 2017. It was an opportunity to put away some doubt and to continue an upward ascent. However, the results on the field did not come, and that is disappointing for everyone. I am responsible. I didn't do a good enough job. No one should blame ownership. We have all the resources that we need to succeed. It's not the fault of the coaches or the staff. This season has my fingerprints on it. Throughout the year, I reiterated my very strong belief in the character of the locker room, the coaches, and, an, and our entire club staff. I don't regret putting my faith there. No one quit. No one has made excuses. We defended the badge with pride and honor. Any shortcomings that anyone may see should realize that's a result of my decisions. For our club to be successful, we need a highly competitive environment. That comes from overall quality and also comes from individual spirit. We didn't have enough of that this year. In this area, I won't fail again, and we will improve. I know that in sports, results are the easiest mark of progress. While wins and losses are always a leading indicator they are not the only measure of progress. And I prefer to look at progress as a continuous journey, not just an end state. Progress is not enhancing what is, but in advancing toward what will be. We will move this club forward. We will achieve our goals. We will build a club that makes our fans proud and adds to Chicago's championship lore. 
This requires courage, discipline, stability, and pride. You know, at the testimonial match in Munich honoring Bastian Schweinsteiger, I had the good fortune to have lunch with Karl Heinz Rummenigge and Uli Honus, two former great players who are now doing a great job in leading that organization. And I learned at that lunch that in 1978, Bayern Munich had 12 full-time employees. 12. In just 40 years, that club earns just under 600 million euros a year and has over 300,000 members. And I believe that we too can accomplish on a world scale. But as an Indian industrialist in IT said, and his name is Naharana Murthy, growth is painful. Change is painful. But nothing is as painful as being stuck where you don't belong. We don't belong outside the playoffs. We don't belong being doubted and even at times denigrated by some. But only we can change that narrative. To become unstuck will not be incremental. Dramatic change is required and it will entail two things. The first is as a club, we must become much more bold. Bolder in our vision, bolder in our ambitions, bolder in our attempts. And the second, we must be brave. We must be brave in our attitudes and our actions. We are forging ahead. We're doing so with conviction. We are pursuing our ambitions with vigor and confidence. We will continue to be a good neighbor within Chicagoland, and we will continue enjoying every day given to us working in this great sport and for this special club. I'm comfortable being in front on all of these issues, and I'm comfortable sharing our intentions because I know that my faith and our values will see us through. I'm confident in our people, in our plan, and in our focus to get there. And I am optimistic. Thank you. Um, all right, I, uh, I want to ask you about, you're talking about having that you won't fail again. What gives you that confidence? I think we have good process. I think we have good people. Uh, I also think the only failure is failing to get up again. And we will continue to get up. I don't think that uh, the opposite of failure is perfection. It's improvement and progress. And I think we're making those. Uh, and I just want to ask about Panovich's contract. Do you have any update on will he be back or anything? It is, remains my intention for Pano to come back. I believe he still wants to return. We have not yet met since the season ended. Um, he, is, he is currently overseas scouting players, and he and I are uh, scheduled to meet next week. Nelson, thanks for taking the time. Um, you say you have faith in your process and people and focus and all of those things. Uh, with that being the case, uh, how do you explain what went so wrong this season? Uh, I think there's a lot of things. The first is um, it comes back to me. And, you know, I read something that Michael Bradley said a few months ago about the situation in Toronto, and I thought it was very applicable to me and to our club. I should have had more urgency about getting some things done. And uh, I didn't. I, I thought for sure we would find the right players and get things done. Uh, you get no credit for not doing a bad deal. But it also doesn't help when you don't get enough good players. We made attempts to bring in players. 
Um, they didn't come through for various reasons. We haven't spoken about, and we don't typically speak about injuries, um, but you know, we have to recognize that they were there. Now, Georgie and Michael were known going into the season, but we didn't expect after two games to pretty much not have either Matt Polster or Luis Solignac for the year. We didn't expect Dax to be injured on two different occasions. You're now talking about losing up to half of your starting team. Um, that's difficult. I think some younger players didn't, uh, didn't perform to an expectation level that we had hoped. And of course, as I said, in preseason, and for which I take full responsibility, I don't think we had sufficient competition within the roster. Just following up on you saying you need to be bolder in, in transfers and no one gets credit for unsigned players or bad, not doing bad deals. Uh, how have you changed, or how will you change, uh, how you approach transfers and how you value players? Well, the first thing is I think our scouting and recruitment process is better, so our pipeline is deeper now than it's ever been. Uh, second is I think we have to look at how we've created our valuations for players and see if that needs to be tweaked. You know, there's, um, there's a reality within the league as well, which is if, if uh, everyone's paying at a certain baseline or freight level, even if you think that's uh, unreasonable, unfair, or improper, you might need to adjust in order to stay in the game. So those are things I need to look at. Dos preguntas. Eh, primero, ¿cómo definiría y cómo evaluaría esta esta temporada, sabiendo que ya es la tercera y con lo que se esperaba para esta temporada, ¿no? que, era, que era bastante, que es un paso como dos paso para atrás, dos años para atrás? No estoy de acuerdo que es dos pasos para atrás. Eh, obviamente no, no consagramos lo que queríamos y, y eso duele. Y perdimos una oportunidad de mostrar el progreso que estamos haciendo. Y cuando los resultados no te acompañan, no hay mucho que uno pueda decir para convencer a la gente de lo que piensan o de lo que ellos ven o interpreten. Pero estoy seguro que el nivel del club está mejor hoy que tres años atrás. Y entiendo que todos siempre van a mirar los puntos, pero también yo sé que en muchas instancias este año el más culpable fue nosotros mismos, que, que no hicimos las jugadas que requiere unos partidos y unos momentos. ¿Sudo? ¿Hay un plan B para arreglar esto? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo se va a arreglar? Obviamente lo que se ha hecho este año no ha funcionado, o sea, por, por todas las razones, pero eso se puede repetir. Las lesiones son normales muchas veces en el, en el fútbol. Creo que los fichajes tampoco se acertó. La salida y las entradas de, de, de los jugadores este año me parece que, que tampoco fueron la, las adecuadas. La defensa no se tocó. O sea que hubo mucho fallo. ¿Hay un plan B para arreglar todo esto? ¿Se ha aprendido algo de todo esto para, para el futuro? Sí, por seguro. Si uno no aprende, se muere. Y nosotros tenemos que aprender y yo tengo que aprender. No diría que es un plan B. Pienso que eh, los, los huecos que vimos en el plantel siguen y tenemos que arrancar ahí. Tenemos que mejorar la columna de, del equipo y, y de ahí mejorar los, los jugadores que tenemos. Tenemos que seguir buscando dentro de la liga para soluciones y fuera de la liga también. Pero de vuelta, tengo, si dos años atrás todos decían, mira qué bueno que es Chicago Fire, mira el, el grupo que tienen y si solamente ponen uno o dos pedazos más pueden ser campeón, campeón. tampoco pienso que después de, de este año podemos tirar todo afuera y decir que todo es basura. No me parece que eso es correcto tampoco. Hi, Nelson. Um, you said that you feel like um, you are making progress. Uh, and in that answer in Spanish, that you've made progress over the last three years. What are some of the areas where you feel you've made progress? Uh, I think our, our roster is generally better. I think our mindset is definitely better, although it's not fully where it needs to be. 
Um, I think this is a difficult year to evaluate. Um, easy, perhaps easy for all of you, um, and it's natural for you just to look at point totals. Um, but I think if we think back to the end of last year and to preseason, there were a lot of people who said we had a good, good core of players and a good team that could contend, and that if we added a few pieces, we could be right with the best teams in the league. We didn't add those pieces, but everything else remained the same other than injuries. I don't think that automatically means that everything is hopeless. Um, I still believe we have a, a good nucleus of guys. We still have a lot of players that have drawn interest around the league, which is, I think, a good barometer that your talent pool is still pretty good, which is very different from the first year where there was interest in perhaps only one player on the squad. Um, but we have to get better. Uh, we have to close deals. I have to close deals. Um, we've got to fix the spine of the team and make that uh, a strength. And that's what we will do in this offseason. Um, to that note, kind of moving away from specifically the first team, I'm, I'm working on a story right now. It's on my mind about the different training facilities that have been built around MLS, um, the investment in infrastructure around teams, expanding scouting networks. Um, you know, I know multiple clubs that are hiring more and more scouts to scout both domestically and internationally. How far off do you think this club is in being able to compete with not just the Atlantas and the Torontos, but you know, even the sporting Kansas Cities and Real Salt Lakes that have built $75 million facilities and um, expanded their scouting networks either to focus on homegrowns or to focus on international signings? Well, on the scouting and recruitment side, again, I think we've, we've made progress there. We have intentions to add to staff um, across a variety of different positions. I feel better about our pipeline of prospects, both domestically and internationally. Um, but even though we'll make those additions and improvements this year, I think it's continuous. It doesn't, doesn't just stop with one infusion. In terms of facilities, um, we're, we have been looking. Uh, we're, we're considering uh, a secondary training facility um, that, that may not be on this campus. Uh, we are looking to add, and we're speaking to the village about maybe adding to the facilities here as well, and in addition to a possible secondary facility. And we'll, we'll continue to do that. You know, uh, it's, it's an obvious challenge, but it's hard to find land uh, in Chicago. And I, I think we would prefer to be closer to the city if we were to build a second facility. And clearly, we can and need to improve our facilities here in conjunction with the village of Bridgeview. As one last point, if I may, Paul. You know, I also think it speaks to uh, the pull of the club, to Pano's ability to recruit, and to the belief uh, that people have in our ideals, our values, and our vision. Uh, because Boston Schweinsteiger came, Johan Kapilov and Michael Delu came, um, you know, and we'll continue to get guys who come on, on that basis as well. It's not just all about fields. Nelson, um, you're now three years into your post, and you've always talked about a three-year plan. How far or how close do you think you are to where you thought you would be at this point? You know, it's, it's uh, the tenor of the question has changed from last year, but it's the same question. So last year, when we had an excellent regular season, finally made the playoffs, everyone was like, have you accelerated your plan? Are you closer? And all the rest of it. And now, again, um, it's natural for most people to see it as a dire situation, which I don't share. And how much further away Jose Luis is, was suggesting that we're two steps worse. Um, I, I've said in the past, and I'll say again, I think it's my job to see beyond the results. The plan and the program that I spoke about when I first came was about trying to build a championship program. Um, that was based on people, process, and focus. Uh, again, I think 
we continue to acquire good people. I think we continue to improve and refine our process. Uh, our focus remains erratic. Um, I still think we need to do some basics better, uh, and we have to get better at that. I also, in this three years, um, I would say one big change in my thinking about the championship program is the importance of mentality. Uh, and that is something that I always thought about, but has become a real priority. And it's the mentality of the people that we bring in, not just the players, a staff, staff downstairs or staff upstairs. Um, we need more winners, people who have been a part of winning programs and winning traditions. Winners win for a reason and losers win, uh, losers lose for a reason. And so we need to, we need to continue to identify and develop uh, the mentality of winners. You've also spoken about part of that championship program being style of play, philosophy. Do you think the team has a philosophy at this point? I do. I know, it's, I, I know that uh, for some it's difficult because they want to equate identity with just one way of playing. And that's not who we are. It's not who we aim to be. Again, last year while we're winning, you know, the commentary about Pano's coaching in the team went along lines of you're, we're an amorphous, shape-shifting machine, he's a tactical genius, and now a year later, he's a dope, and we have no identity, and we don't know how we're playing. Results inform those public opinions. The way that we've always looked at it is the game is continuously evolving and every game represents a new challenge. In an ideal state, uh, we would be able to um, meet or set the demands of the game, regardless of circumstance or opposition. To do that, we need a higher technical level, higher tactical intelligence um, among our, our team, uh, and we'll work on that, but we're not we're not going to confine ourselves or allow ourselves to be defined uh, in the way that other teams have chosen, which has been successful uh, for some of them, not all of them. Um, we'll stick to trying to play football, uh, have general principles of play that apply regardless of system or style, and ultimately we want to win. Nelson, uh, talked uh, earlier about uh, improving the spine and addressing uh, concerns there. Um, some of your better leadership is uh, pending uh, return for next year for contract and options and various issues. Uh, obviously, Master Schweinsteiger um, is, uh, is up for contract. Uh, Dax McCarty, uh, another team leader. Have you spoken to those two about their status for next year and what the direction of the team might be going into 2019? Uh, Dax, we have an option on, so he's not up for contract. Um, our conversations with Basti's representation continue to be very positive, um, and we're working on that on a daily basis. Um, I've not yet had my exit interview for the season with Dax. Um, we've, I've conducted, I think, 14 players so far. Um, you know, the, the general themes to those 14 remain remarkably similar. Uh, interestingly, every player has expressed a desire to return, uh, which would belie uh, a crappy environment. I think no one would want to be a part of that, so I'm encouraged that, that people see that. I think everybody recognizes that we need to have improvements in the team. Um, most people recognize that they themselves want to improve and, and offer more. Uh, but the spine of the team remains a, a focal point, and, and we'll work on that. Um, are injury concerns preventing uh, someone like Matt Polster maybe possibly coming back for next year? Uh, he was an important part of 2017, but uh, obviously missed a big chunk of this year. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And, you know, uh, losing Matt not only hurt in 
his spot, but it has a ripple effect, uh, I think, on how we played and, and on the roster. Uh, you know, I'll briefly say that uh, regarding all aspects of our club, all aspects of our football operations, we have to examine those and get better. You know, we, we, we suffered too many injuries this year. We suffered uh, too many injuries during rehabilitation, so we have to look at that and modify and improve and correct. Um, we can't ignore that. Matt is out of contract. Um, we will make an offer uh, for Matt to return. Uh, that offer will be um, in conjunction with Major League Soccer which will at the least assure that his rights within MLS remain with us. Um, but we'd like to bring Matt back. He's expressed a desire to return. So hopefully we can finalize that to mutual satisfaction. Nelson, I know at the end of last season, uh, great success. And then we came back for this season. And it looked like the roster was a little bit, a little bit undermanned. Um, how much do you think you can get the team to a better starting point for next season where there's enough players, quality players, to see this team get off to a better start next season? Well, look, um, if you'll allow me uh, not, not to – hope it doesn't come across as defensive, but um, in, in January and February of this year, you know, we, we made a run for an experienced goalkeeper. And our, our plan all along was to allow Richard in particular to try to learn from an experienced goalkeeper because Richard is still young. And despite having successes at, a, at an even younger age, um, we felt needed time. Um, we didn't close that deal. Uh, in the time that we didn't close that deal, that goalkeeper regained his starting spot. His team started to move up the table. They advanced in in their league's cup championship, and, um, and that was it. He decided to, to return to his, to his current team. Um, in the summer window, we had reached agreement with the club on a transfer for what you could call a number 10. We had reached personal terms with that player. Um, and then that player's father told his son that he didn't want him coming to MLS. Not that he didn't want him coming to Chicago Fire, but that he didn't want him coming to MLS. We took some time to, it was right at the time that uh, Alfonso Davies was transferred to Bayern Munich. We explained that Tabla was transferred to Barcelona, that Matt Miazga was transferred to Chelsea, um, but we couldn't convince the father, and so the player remained at his club. And we also made a uh, $17 million offer uh, for an attacking midfielder. Um, that offer uh, was rejected. We were told it was insufficient, that there was another team that, uh, or another club in the world that was offering better. Um, this speaks to the valuation I referenced earlier. We thought that that was more than a fair price. We also thought we were bidding against ourselves, so we didn't raise our offer. Clearly, we didn't secure that player, uh, but he was not transferred to another team and remains where he was. And also in the summer, uh, we made an offer for a center back who is a starter for his respective national team. Um, we reached terms with that club. Uh, we reached general terms with the player, but the structure of the deal was complicated. Uh, Major League Soccer, did not approve of the structure. I think they were correct in making that decision, and we didn't have enough time in the, in the remaining window to, to sort that out. So next year will be a lot of the same. First, we have to decide who we're inviting back um, to come with us. And once we have that settled, we'll know again, you know, the areas that we need focus. Obviously, the uh, retirement of Brandon uh, was unexpected, so that creates a new dynamic that we had not anticipated. Um, but we'll figure it out, and um, there's nothing I could say that's going to convince anyone. It's the signatures that we make and how the players perform after they sign. 
Nelson, you, you've talked about uh, the problems on the field this year, and, and I know you've been here three years, but the problems for the, the franchise go back nine years on the field, the problems getting to the playoffs. What is it about this club that it can't succeed on the field, can't get to the playoffs and succeed when it gets there? It's a, it's a fair question. It's hard for me to talk about what came before. And, and I know that what I say next sounds self-serving. Uh, but one thing is we need stability. You know, we, we have a plan. We have a vision. Um, nobody wants it to take a long time. Um, I, I, I think uh, public reaction doesn't allow there to be a lot of time. Um, but stability will be important. Following up on that plan will be important. But as I also said in my opening, I think a lot is attitude. You know, this is my first year in the dual role. And I, I think that there's been a consequence of losing, which has transferred to the club and to individuals in the club. And when you lose, your shoulders slump and you sag and you doubt yourself um, and you have less pride and you let your standards slip. And, uh, you know, I spoke to the office staff today and I tried to address that. Uh, we cannot allow that to happen. And we have to stop apologizing for what happened in the past. We have to accept responsibility and accountability for what is today. And I reiterate my responsibility and accountability in that. But we need to go forward. We need to hold our heads high. We need to improve upon what we have, uh, advocate for more, uh, and get it done. And we have to recognize that we're all in it together, that the days of just the coach gets fired and everyone else goes on their merry way, those days are over. You know, we're all in it. If we fail, everyone should feel a sense of failure and a sense of accountability and responsibility. I know I've asked you this question before, but given your opening statement, I think it's appropriate to ask again, is the dual role, the business side and the soccer side, too much for one person? It's a fair question. I, I think I'll be better at it this year, having experienced it. Um, I, I said last year I thought the aerator that I felt it hurt me the most was in preparation for the draft. Um, I, I, we've added staff. You know, John Urban is our COO. Um, he's a fantastic person. Uh, and he's, he's been helpful. We're adding more staff. We have more hires that we'll be announcing soon um, uh, uh, across, if I could call it the executive level. So we'll spread that workload a bit. It is something that I think about, Oren, and I think that there will be a time where it, uh, at least I can't do both or I would advocate that it shouldn't be one person doing both. I still believe I can do it. I still believe I can contribute in a positive way. I still believe in the relationship that Pano and I have and our, uh, our working dynamic is positive. But in the moment that I don't believe I'm part of the solution, I won't need someone to take it away or to fire me. Uh, I'll know to walk away. Nelson. <coughs> Nelson. La Fiera Deportiva. Ah, eh, hablaste un poco acerca de lo que era tener consistencia y eh, mantener a la, el mismo técnico y a los mismos jugadores. Eh, en los últimos seis años que está cubriendo al Fire, siempre al final de la temporada y al principio de la nueva temporada, siempre he visto como una, eh, no sé si cacería de brujas, pero como que eh, muchos jugadores se van y muchos jugadores vienen y a diferencia de otros clubes de, de la MLS donde eh, están consistentemente con sus jugadores eh, y se les ve que los demás jugadores están ahí y están obteniendo los resultados por ser consistentes en esos jugadores 
¿cuál es el plan para el Chicago Fire en este 2019 que tiene el draft eh, en casa? La puerta? Hay, hay, hay un balance. Eh, obviamente es mejor si puedes tener ese grupo que trabaja junto para varios años. A la misma vez, tienes que estar seguro que ese grupo es lo que requiere para ganar. Entonces, y en cada año, no me importa si sos campeón o no, en cada año hay cambios en un grupo, en un plantel. Y obviamente va a haber cambios este año. Eh, ya hay tres cambios eh, porque jugadores decidieron que no van a jugar más en su carrera. Uh, so, ahí ya tenés tres cambios, por lo menos mínimamente uno que no esperábamos. Um, pero tenemos, tenemos que decidir quién es ese grupo para avanzar, para tener esa consistencia y qué, qué tenemos que traer para hacerlo más completo. Y la segunda pregunta es de, de los uh, tres jugadores que hablaste para armar la columna vertebral que decidieron no venir al Chicago Fire. Eh, ¿Hay un plan para el próximo año de seguir armando la columna vertebral, eh, ya sea en el arquero, en defensa y un delantero más? Mira, nosotros tenemos que mejorar en todas las líneas. Eh, no, no es solamente ahí. Y la columna es más que tres posiciones también. So, pero si no arreglamos eso, si no mejoramos eso, pienso que siempre vamos a tener dificultades. Entonces, eso tiene que ser una prioridad. Let's go over to Doug McIntyre on the conference line. Doug, do you have a question for Nelson? Can you guys hear me okay? Now we can. Okay, very good. Uh, hi, Nelson. Um, just want to talk about attendance. Uh, and the relationship with some of the fan groups, obviously some publicized incidents this year. Um, you finished second in the league in attendance. What's the status uh, with with Section 8, with some of the other fan groups uh, following following this season? And sort of on a, on a related note, you mentioned if, if there is going to be a, a, an off-campus training facility built that you would want it a bit closer to the city. Um, obviously, Tom Ricketts and his group have uh, announced plans to start a USL team in the city, build a stadium there. There's also a long-term lease in Bridgeview. Do you see at any point in the future a path back to the city of Chicago for the fire, whether that's at Lincoln Yards, Soldier Field, somewhere else? Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Uh, I'll take the first question. I think you said we were second in attendance. I think you might have meant second, second from, yeah, yeah, I just wanted you to know that I, I'm a good listener and I don't duck it. Um, and also ask about the fan group. Look, uh, uh, the, the sense of disappointment is profound um, from ownership to staff to the players and always and obviously among the fans. And when you don't win, uh, it's difficult to expect different. Uh, we have great loyal fans who truly support the players and the team. And we're appreciative of that. I'm appreciative of that. Regarding what's happened and what's happening with the fan groups, um, in August we met with leadership of Section 8. Uh, we mutually agreed at that meeting not to discuss things through the media or through publicly. And so we'll honor our word and we'll not do that. We do have another meeting scheduled for various supporter leaders and individual supporters next week. And the other thing I'd mention is that at the recommendation of, the, or a recommendation that came out of the August meeting, I have went and met with um, some individual supporters. And I've learned a lot in those conversations. I think the biggest takeaway is we, the club, need to do a better job of communicating, and we have to find some new vehicles to communicate. Uh, I still believe that we're deeply aligned in what we want. 
there are certain things that we as a club need to have. Um, and I, I think that when we're able to express those, that there will be agreement. And we have to recognize and work towards achieving some of the things that supporter groups believe they need to have or the improvements that they need to see. So we'll continue to, to work on that. Um, but I'm at least appreciative of the individuals who have met me over the last three or four weeks, and I'm looking forward to the meeting next week to continue a, a productive dialogue. Regarding uh, a secondary training facility in the city, uh, yeah, I, I think that, you know, a, a deeper connection to most or all of the neighborhoods in Chicagoland are important. Um, and I think just having proximity to the city and living in the city helps on a lot of fronts. You know, that's, look, that's where the Bears and the Black, Blackhawks and the Bulls and the Cubs and the White Sox all live, you know, and the sky lives there. And so it'd be, it'd be helpful. Um, but it's a, it's a complex question and situation. Um, we remain grateful to the village of Bridgeview for its support, and uh, we'll continue to try to defend with honor the fans who come here. Thanks, Nelson. Thank Jeff you. Carlisle from ESPN. Do you have a question for Nelson? Uh, yeah, I do. Can you hear me okay? Yes, Jeff. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Nelson. Um, you know, in the last two days, you've had two players retire, um, you know, guys who are, you know, would, would appear to be in their prime years. And, and I get that these decisions are very individual in nature, but does the fact that you have like, you know, two guys in their mid twenties quitting the game, does that, to what extent does that give you pause at all in terms of the environment within the club to, to develop young players and, and things like that? Uh, it doesn't Jeff. And because I know you, I'm not insulted, but if I didn't know you, I would be. Um, look, Brandon made a personal decision uh, that he shared with me on Tuesday morning. It clearly was something that he had been thinking about. Um, he has declined some interview opportunities. Uh, I don't think I'm betraying a confidence when I share that what he said to me was he was ready for a new chapter in his life. And we respect that. We wish him happiness and success. Christian had suggested to me that he was thinking about retirement um, and, and was looking at other roles outside of the game. I can't speak for him. Um, I think injuries played a part. It's, it's been unfortunate. He's, he's a man with, with a lot of talent. Um, but the reality is he hasn't been able to be on the field consistently. Um, I think they're completely unrelated to one another and absolutely unrelated to our environment. And Alan Gordon, I think, is just a matter of father time finally came. Um, although I suspected a team in a playoff run next year who might look for a boost in the locker room and late game heroics, his phone may ring and we'll see if Gordo answers or not. But again, I don't think it had anything to do with our environment. Yeah, I wasn't asking about Alan, I was just asking about Brandon and, and Christian, but, but thank you. You're welcome. For this final loop, if we could just keep it to one question, that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, I, I, you kind of alluded to this, I want to be a little more direct. Uh, how do you think you approach the soft season differently from, from last season? Last Urgency. Season? Urgency. You know, um, not doing bad deals is good. Not getting good players is bad. We need to get more good players. So we, we can't come up empty-handed. Um, I also think that we can't be reactionary. Um, you know, it, it, there's, a, there's a line there, Dan. So there will be some who will see me as rigid, okay? Um, I prefer to see myself as disciplined. 
And yeah, we could have signed some players, um, but if they had bad contracts, I would have avoided the difficult nature of these questions today, but I'd be answering them for two or three more years after the fact. Having said that, we have to improve the team that does require reinforcements, whether those come from in the league, inside the country, or outside. That's my remit. That's my job. The makeup of the roster in a lot of key places over the past couple of years with Dax, with Basti, even with Nico, um, kind of your three biggest players, I think you could say, um, is a little bit on the older side. Um, do you have any plans to reallocate your spending towards younger players who maybe will have fewer injury concerns just as a function of their age? Um, consistent questioning. So I think earlier in the year, Sam, you also mentioned there's a gap in our roster in the 27 to 29 year old, which, which I agreed with, if I remember correctly. Um, first of all, it's important to note Bossy didn't suffer an injury this year. Uh, Nico had minor injuries, and it was only Dax who had some injuries, and those are among the first of his career. Um, I think it's about assembling a winning side and about trying to create sustainability in the side. Um, I agreed with you a few months ago and still hold true. The biggest hole in our roster age-wise is those established pros somewhere between 26 and 29 years old. Um, they're not, that's not going to be easy to fill. Uh, you know, they're in the prime of their careers. They'll cost the most money. And in MLS, they'll be like gold. We won't go young just for the sake of going young. I know that's a popular theme uh, across MLS and for and within MLS. It's about getting better. I think Georgie is a piece we can build around. Um, and I think he continued to show uh, development and improvement. Uh, we just, we have to get better. And we have to do so in a way that allows us to have sustainability. Nelson, quería hacerle una, una pregunta, la, la misma que, que le hice en la primera round table que tuvimos este año, y es que, ¿qué nota le pondría a esta temporada sí. teniendo en cuenta lo deportivo y el divorcio total con, la, con las barras de animación? ¿no? ¿Qué nota le pondría a toda esta campaña? So I've been asked to give myself a grade. Voy a dejar que ustedes me den la nota. Mira, eh, 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 nadie, puede, nadie puede estar satisfecho con el año, ni nuestros propietarios, ni yo mismo. Eh, eh, los resultados eh, no son aceptables, pero eh, lo, lo, entiendo lo que ocurrió, entiendo mi responsabilidad en lo que ocurrió y entiendo si no hay una mejora que, que yo puede ser que, que tengo que sufrir más o puedo, hasta puede ser que pierdo mi trabajo. Eh, en otros aspectos, nosotros estamos tomando decisiones difíciles, pero adecuados. Y para mover este club para adelante, tenemos que tener ese coraje de tomar esas decisiones. Y aunque siempre tenemos que escuchar y sentir para mejorar, también hay veces en cual tenés que tomar decisión y ir adelante. Um. <coughs> Whether we agree with it or not, when you look across the sports landscape, any sport, and especially this sport globally, three years is a, a long time to have to, in, in your job or in Pano's job, uh, to be with the team. So I would imagine there, there at least is an understanding of why some fans are wondering you know, why the accountability doesn't include people losing their jobs. That being said, what would be your message to them as to why you believe that 
you and Pano are the right leadership to continue uh, going forward and building and growing as, as you say you have faith that you can do? Uh, the, the first thing I'd say is look at the clubs in this league and elsewhere and in other sports that keep turning over coaches and tell me who's successful. It's not happening. Now, there's nothing I can say to convince fans about Pano and me. It's not about words, it's about deeds. But what I know is there's been a lot of turnover at this club and it hasn't moved forward. There's been a lot of turnover at other clubs and they have not moved forward. And the clubs that have achieved have had stability. Stability in the front office, stability with the, with the staff, and as I answer to Hernan in Spanish, there's been a continuity and a consistency of some group of players. And it's not just players and personnel, it's a stability and a continuity in a vision, in a path. So, and it's, it's not just uh, this sport, although Sir Alex Ferguson finished 11th in his first season. He didn't win his first trophy, which was an FA Cup, for four years, and he didn't win his first league title for seven years after taking over. Sir Alex, one of the greatest coaches ever in the sport. In today's society, if it's just knee-jerk reaction or bowing to the pressure of, of a public sentiment, we wouldn't have these great coaches. Tom Landry didn't win a game his first season, didn't win more than five games in each of his first four seasons. And look at the, the club that he helped build. It's, it's an ugly word, it's a dirty word, it feels like a self-serving word, but time is part of it. Time is part of the growth of MLS. We all aspire for this league to be among one of the great leagues in the world. And we all know we're going to get there. But we can't blink our eyes, wake up tomorrow, and say we're it. It's, it's just not how it goes. I may not be right. I may fail. People may be sick of me. All those things may be true. But I'm still going to say the same thing. Whoever is next, give them time. Give them support. Give them stability. I think, I'm, I'm not complaining about the questions. I think they're right. I think they're appropriate. I'm not complaining about the fan reaction. I think they're right. No, everybody wants to be associated with something that gives them pride. Losing doesn't engender that. I get it. But I can't state an effective case publicly because they've heard it all before. They've heard it from the three GMs or technical directors that preceded me. They've heard it from the two presidents or COOs that have preceded me. This is about, um, it's a results-oriented business. We didn't deliver the results this year. We didn't deliver them in the first year, although I would submit the circumstances were different, but I still accept it goes against my record. We did deliver it to some extent in year two, um, but I think the, the great teams, the great clubs pursue a vision um, with dedication, um, with guts, and they get there. And the teams that don't are the teams that constantly turn over. And if you could find a team that constantly turns over and does it, I'd be interested in studying it. Nelson, you talked about the goalkeepers and pursuing a veteran goalkeeper over the season. We saw all three goalkeepers get minutes, more some than others. How would you assess the goalkeeper situation and would you be pursuing any reinforcements in that position? Um, the, yeah, we need to improve across all the lines. We need to improve our competitive quality and our competitive spirit in the goalkeeper position, along the back line, in the midfield, among the forwards, uh, for 
bench players in specific roles. All of that has to be done. I, I think it's unfair of me and inappropriate of me to suggest or point a figure, finger at one position. Um, we didn't get the job done, starting with me. So I, I, need to fix, I need to fix what I did and how I did it uh, before I can start pointing a finger at someone else. Another off-field question. Um, have you determined what the brand refresh will entail this uh, winter? And does some of that dovetail into uh, finding another potential uh, jersey sponsor? Um, we're not complete with our brand study, our, our brand work. Um, it's a good opportunity for me to thank Major League Soccer, who's been heavily involved with us as we look at that. And um, so don't have the results yet to share. On the Jersey front, uh, we have two very engaged parties. Uh, we're in advanced discussions with each of those. Um, we're excited by the prospects, um, and we hope to have a positive conclusion before the end of the year. Uh, Nelson, I know we look towards, or you look towards, the fact of bringing in players from across seas from these major clubs. Um, is there a thought or something maybe we're missing out on some players right here, good young players or maybe players from the league that could help the Chicago Fire? Absolutely. Look, we, um, uh, we don't have all the best Chicagoland youth in our academy. Uh, that's why Matt Pearson has now devoted most of his scouting time to Chicagoland and the immediate surrounding region. Um, we, we have to do a better job there. I, I am really pleased with the progress of the academy, really pleased um, with the development of a lot of individual players. Our U15 team just participated in a major international tournament in Poland. It went undefeated and unscored upon. And you know that things are going well when uh, the foreign teams that you play against or that are scouting that event are coming to you and saying, can I have the name and phone number of that player and that player and that player, which obviously we didn't give. And MLS uh, needs to be a source, of course. Um, but the league continues to expand and expand rapidly. And it's hard for the pace of the domestic player to keep up, which makes teams uh, either more reluctant or put a higher price point on those very good domestic players that ex exist. We don't shut ourselves off to that, uh, and we'll continue to try that avenue just as we continue to try uh, the USL avenue, um, PDL, looking for players. The draft is still a source of good players, and of course the international market. Regarding the issues with the supporters groups, regardless of who was right and who was wrong in that argument, Looking back, did it have any effect in the results on the field, directly or indirectly, and how did it affect attendance? Um, it's hard to know the, the measure. You know, I, I think what we would all agree is the fan experience is essential uh, to the business, to the team, uh, to everything else. Uh, where we haven't agreed is uh, we're going to put fan safety first, um, and, and we have an obligation. You know, I'd, I'd, rather lose, I'd rather lose some fans for life than lose the life of some fans. And I still remain optimistic that we can find common ground. Um, and even when we do, and I, I think we will, we still have to grow our supporter base. You know, our supporter numbers are still too low, especially comparatively speaking around the league. And we want to help support them uh, grow their own numbers. So it'd be disingenuous to say there was no negative impact. F for sure there is. It's hard to measure how deep that is. You know, the players are professional. 
Um, I believe our fans give our guys an extra set of lungs. And again, I think every time our fans come, and still many, many fans came, even if some supporters didn't, they provided that lift to our team. You know, we beat LAFC 3-1 in a game they had to have, in a game they wanted in order to get a top two seed or perhaps even contend for the supporter shield. Um, and the fans that were in attendance that day were fantastic helping us, and I think they did. Nelson, uh, mencionaste que este año no se pudo adquirir un número 10, eh, un atacante. Eh, en la última partido, eh, Bastian Schweinsteig mencionó que muchos compañeros de él, tanto de Inglaterra como del Bayern Múnich, le habían mencionado que querían venir a la MLS o a Chicago Fire. Eh, ¿Hay planes para una sorpresa el próximo año para Chicago Fire de tener un jugador de alguna talla europea? Nunca decimos o miramos solamente europeo, suramericano, centroamericano. Siempre estamos buscando para buena gente, que son buenos jugadores, que encajen en, en lo que queremos hacer y que tienen los mismos valores del club. Si, si ocurre que es europeo, fenomenal. Si ocurre que es mexicano, fenomenal. Uh, pero eso, lo que siempre vamos a mirar, primero el jugador, segundo el, eh, primero la persona, el hombre, segundo el jugador, y ver si, si ellos eh, son para nosotros. Doug McIntyre, ¿tienes una pregunta para Nelson? Jeff Carlisle, ¿tienes una pregunta para Nelson? Okay. I'm, I'm okay, thanks. Thanks. All right. That concludes today's roundtable discussion. Thank you all for joining us today, and thank you, Nelson, for your time. Thank you, everybody.